Okay, I was all set to record this, and this little guy started whining about wanting to clown into my lap. <sighs> this isn't going to work, but I'm going to try it because it'll be amusing. Okay, so we're doing the lecture. This is Augie. I suppose it's short for Augustus, but we adopted it with the name Augie. He's a five-year-old chihuahua mix. So he's, uh, he'll, he'll curl up and fall asleep in just a second, and then he'll whine every time I move which in sign language is difficult. Okay, so we're doing 10-4. 10-4, good buddy. Um, all right, so again, I'll put the whole lecture, this whole recording on here um, and send out the PowerPoint. Uh, I didn't put GIFs, uh, I put a couple of movies in here because I'm finding it slows down the recording. I want to make sure this is this is clear at least initially, and then I'll put more stuff into the powerpoints. Um, so this whole unit is on describing personal qualities, um, and one of the interesting things about the difference between English and ASL is that in English we say that person is pretty, right? Um, and we we know how to say it. we know how to sign that. Um, but what if we want to say the pretty person is doing something? In English, we just add the adjective to that noun. Um, as I said, the pretty person. In ASL, we treat it a little differently because they're all, um, I guess what are called predictive um, uh, adjectives. They kind of have to be on their own. So you have to first say, that person is pretty, that person is uh, eating. So we, so we treat it that way. Um, there's attributive, the friendly dog is eating, so we, the attribute of the dog is friendly. And in ASL, we would say that dog is friendly and that dog is eating. Okay. So in general, a, a way to keep in mind is that almost all the time, in ASL, I can't think of any um, irregulars, but there always are. Um, the way we literally sign things is, hey, that person, that person's this. Now, that person that I just described is going to do this. And in the end, it, like for example, if you're interpreting, you can put those together to say, the pretty person is eating. But in ASL, what you actually signed is, that person's pretty, and that person's doing something else. Okay. So that's the structure that we're going to be keeping in mind as we go through this. So a, a one way to think about it is we've talked about topic comment sentences. So that's the topic, right? So it takes a little getting used to, but that idea that you're, that's the person, let me describe the person and then show the person doing something else. Um, Oh my God, unit 10, there's a ton of vocab. So I apologize ahead of time. <laughs> it's just a lot. So, oh. Okay, so for unit 10, four, again, we're gonna get a lot of uh, pro and con for things. So disposition, what your, what your uh, what do you like? What does that person like? Are they cheerful or friendly? It's like finger spelling, and they go past the mouth, just along the jawline. Friendly. So pleasant could be stuck up. I've seen stuck up with index finger, and it's hard to see in the picture here. I'll. Uh, include the video at the bay, at the end of the this thing. I've also seen stuck up with this, with both. I tend to do it with this. Um, and I don't know if there's some uh, negative implication. This is the bullshit hand shape. Um, so we've got cheerful, pleasant, stuck up. Um, Polite, 
is at the sternum. It's just the five hands, very polite. If you notice, it comes from like man, woman, someone saying gentleman or lady. It's it's like fancy, Ooh, fancy clothes, fancy. Well, you got a problem? Um, so polite. In polite society, where we wear dresses, polite. Your lady, he's a gentleman, very polite. Polite versus there's rude, rude, rude. Um, rude, no, rude, rude. <laughs> it's hard to see. Rude. I tend to sign rude, and in Ohio, I see this more often. It's like uh, a bent V in the chin and twist off. Um, my gut says that, ah, naked, that's what's rude. Um, well, I've seen both. Um, I think it comes from like inexcusable. Rude, rude. Um, and again, I'll go through and uh, the gifts I have, I will include in the PowerPoint. Um, at, a, at a later date. Um, kind. Sweet. Remember sugar and cute? They're all on the chin. It's that whole diabetes. Right? So, oh, kind, so sweet, or good hearted, soft hearted, kind, sweet. The opposite. Mean, mean. It comes from the nose. Mean. Temperament. Again, sweet. Oh, sweet. Versus grouchy. Grouchy. Modest. Um, humble, it's, it's like straightforward, but it comes, it drops down and under humble, um, putting yourself under humble, humble. Sometimes you'll just see it straight down humble and big headed. It's the, the sort of large sign. There's an interesting ASL-ism that I haven't seen in in conversation in a decade. I saw it a lot for a while in the 90s, was people would go, ooh, as if, say, someone else had a big ego and you got hit with their ego. So someone would be bragging about something and the people around him would go, ow. Um, so big ego. There's also pride. With the A, it comes up the sternum, pride. It can be positive, or it can be boasting, is also with the Y hand shapes at the waist. Look at me. That's boastful, boastful. Um, goody, goody. This is the sign for innocent. Okay, so two U's. Ooh, and this is an honestly innocent. Oh, innocent. Oftentimes you'll see it like in courtrooms. Innocence. If the pinky is out, it it tends to be a negation or a sarcasm. So if you say um it's a little bit judgmental. Well, a little bit. It's a lot judgmental. In one of the videos, uh, the one woman talks about, oh, I thought you were such a goody goody. It's, um, goody two shoes. It's a little bit more negative. I suppose it depends. You could be like, oh, she's innocent. Um, versus troublemaker. Trouble. Trouble. Humor. Uh, funny. You'll see funny like this 
or like this. Um, um, this either one, I think this is just the, the shorthand version of this. Um, silly, 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 funny. I think they're both, I think that's why it's an N. I don't know if they think they're spelled, that's weird. Um, and I don't know what the French word for funny is. So maybe that can, there's a lot of um, French words that start with the letter that then becomes the initialized sign in ASL. To look for it, chercher, uh, voir, the, so uh, the, the real history of where they came from, we have some clues based on uh, the writings of the time with the early 1800s, but we don't really have that much documentation because to, as you've noticed, taking notes, you have to write and draw. It's really hard to write signs. Um, if some, you know, quiet, uh, quiet, very direct, very serious, also serious, serious. The video looks like it's chopping so hopefully this is still good um strict or stern that double the bent v or double x i suppose boom on the nose or mm, strict not silly strict um that's more for imposing discipline and heart soft i kind of talked about that for kind but so you could have uh, some boss who's very strict and another boss who's very kind-hearted. Cool. It's like, it's the opposite of rude. Rude is two X's and cool is, actually I, I, I like pinch, cool, oh, cool. I don't know why, oh, cool. maybe dimple. Cool. Um, or this is cool as in fancy. I'm like, whoa, that's that's some that's cool. Sometimes a really nice car goes by and people. Are, um, strange or odd. Strange. And this is a variation of that. Weird. Weird. Active or on the go. Um, remember to do, 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 do. Oh, he's, he's always doing something. Um, another variation of that is this means like effort. We've used it before, I think, in one and two with like to decorate, to do up the room, deck the halls with bottles of holly, right? Boom, boom, boom. This also means active. You'll see it sometimes like this, where, oh, boom, very active. Boom, boom, boom. And the opposite, laid back, not really lazy, but just sort of chilling. And the face usually. Um, lazy. Facial expression reflecting lazy, as opposed to people tend to loyal. And make sure that it's an L, because if you do it as a G, it means guilty. There's a couple signs for worried. There's the W's, the worried, or trouble, trouble, trouble. Um, we did lay back a little bit, but nervous. For anxious, uh, nervous, also stressed. Sometimes you'll see this, as in one uh, the legs are shaking, right? That's also for nervous, um, apprehensive. Um, at dealing with others. You can be open-minded or closed-minded. Not gonna make any political statement right here. Um, 
Um, if you're understanding, if you do it one-handed or two-handed, it looks like popcorn, but up here, it's actually that um, temporal aspect of circular. It's very understanding, um, very accepting. And if you add that little sweep of, it can be both positive and negative too. Oh, accepting or uh, gullible. Flexible. So you could be, oh, flexible, 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 that's fine. Or we can go back to strict, the opposite. Focused. Notice how close-minded and focused are very similar. Right? It's how you have the, your, the horse blinders on. And, oh, let me go back up one. Stubborn. Stubborn. It actually comes from donkey. Because donkeys, if you've ever had to deal with one, are very stubborn. And donkeys tend to have one ear flop over, right? So, mm, stubborn. Uh, it's not actually how we would call someone an ass, unless you're literally talking about he is a donkey. E -oh, e -oh, that kind of thing. Um, so the next one is affectionate. Warm, warm. Remember hot. Warm just a little bit. Warm, 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 cold. Um, so we literally use the same metaphor. Uh, patience. Good patience. Or just patient. And it's drawing the thumbnail, the flat of the thumbnail down right in here. Right down the chin. It also, if you twist it, it means suffer. So patience is mild suffering. Um, and if someone, no patience, oh, no patience. Um, this is a sign for like absolutely none. It's like, uh, it's the wallet where you open it up and a moth comes out when you see that in a cartoon. He's got none. Patience. So intellectual ability. I think a bunch of these we've already done in one and two, but um, there are two ways to say this it tends to be smart in terms of clever. Oh, smart. This is smart in intelligence. Oh, he's smart, he's smart. Either one applies. Uh, you may feel a certain way, prefer one over the other, or in a certain situation, I found myself signing one or the other and not really knowing why. It just makes sense in my head, knowing the person. And you can say, not smart, not smart, not smart. Dumb, really careful, don't hit yourself hard. If you are really trying to emphasize the sign, you know how, oh, bad, right? We, we exaggerate it. You don't want to do that with dumb or like blind. Um, you don't want to injure yourself. So oftentimes you'll see a surrogate head come up. He dumb as a rock, right? So this is almost the sign for rock here, right? Oh, dumb or stupid. Um, I've seen this as like, I'm stupid like that. Because people don't want to hit themselves. Uh, oh, wise. I want to go add wise. It's just a little X. If you think about it, it's like the Egypt, the sign for Egypt, but wise. Oh, he's wise. Uh, not wise. Gullible, we came back to here, right? Um, courageous. Oh, you know what they added? Good judgment. Good at weighing the options. So judge. Those are the, the scales of justice. Good justice. And the last one, pea brain. For, for this little section, pea brain. Having a tiny brain. Um, it's also the sign uh, for geek. Um, whereas like nerd tends to be pushing your glasses up. Um, those signs have drifted. It used to be, oh, idiot. 
it's this is still used for idiot but now there can be a oh he's he's a geek he likes sci-fi science fiction yeah geek Uh, playing Dungeons and Dragons used to be <laughs> some people's mind still is, but it's cool. All right, uh, so now we get to courageous, brave. Also, the sign for healthy. This expression is a bit different. Oh, brave. It could be the verb to recover, get healthy again. Um, so, brave versus fearful. We did this one. Beautiful, scared, nervous. Um, cool. So there's a whole bunch of vocab. Um, um, we've done a little bit with conversing where you, just to practice, you sign one side of the conversation and the other back and forth and play both roles. Um, now, normally I'd have you break up in, into, into pairs or groups and do this talk about each other talk about friends um the dialogue example is someone telling a uh, a friend telling a person um about someone else and that person then goes really goes and checks gets the info has a conversation about the situation that was being talked about and then comes back to report what the real story was <laughs> gee that doesn't sound like high school at all or or family or anytime so we have these conversations all the time that's a lot where we're incorporating adjectives about people oh he's mean she's not nice or oh she's so good-hearted those kind of things um, so here's a layout of three brief scenes that would normally we would play in the classroom where you go talk about someone else then that person goes and verifies the information then comes back and corrects or reinforces the opinion um, so you can't really do it. I want you to kind of think about something that's happened in your life and where you've done that, where someone's told you something, you go to check it out and then come back and report the facts. And try to have a simplified version of those conversations to practice incorporating those adjectives. Conversation two, um, where she tells about a guy who's mean and made someone cry. And then he goes to investigate, like Sherlock Holmes, to find out what truly happened. And then comes back and reports to her. So take a look at that. There are questions in exercise at the end, basically the homework or the follow-up activities. And I've, uh, I've put the questions from the activities in there. Um, but one of the good things, one of the good approaches I want you to do is um, take a look at any questions you have about the material like these two for the mini dialogue. Read them first, then go back and watch the video. Don't worry about answering the question the first time. Just watch the video to get any information you can, because you'll see things that you don't consciously pick up uh, until the second time or the third time watching it, and then you'll start to notice more things. Um, but if you're only looking for answers, once you get that, what you need is an answer, you're, you're, you'll check out. You, will, you literally will tune out. Um, so try to get as much information because sometimes the simplest answer is not the correct one. Um, lots of times I've seen where someone gives two reasons in the in their little dialogue, two reasons why they didn't do something, and people write down just the first one, and it's half of an answer. So make sure you watch and get the full answer. And sometimes ASL breaks up ideas, so make sure you under you have all of them. Better to have too much information in your answer than not enough. Um, so, ba -ba -ba -bum -bum -bum. there are two different, well, the three mini dialogues, and there are questions about each one. And then I put all of the videos that I have as what they're one lump. Um, it's in there. And so there's a ton of vocab. And again, I didn't put a gift for each one. Uh, the vocab review is uh, in this uh, in this video, so you should be fine. So that is. 10 4. There's, there's homework, which is these mini dialogues to look at. Um, but the big thing is, is how do you describe? And again, if you think about it as just splitting up the concept into sentences.
Um, in one and two, we talk about how uh, oftentimes it doesn't matter whether you say red car or car red. Here's an indicate. Here's a situation where if we're describing a person, we want to do man handsome in that order or man tall because we're establishing who we're talking about and then we're describing them. Because if we just say the tall, it could be anything it doesn't narrow the field but if we talk about like that man with the brown hat who's tall that order so establish the person describe them then say what they do and that's what we're doing here is so we go back to that order and it's a lot of here's a new idea okay got it this is what they do eyebrows down so topic comment she's pretty she's eating she throws up she has but no. um cool. okay so we're practicing using those um those vocab and there is a little clip from the, the dialogue and i will put it in there as a separate file where it shows how she uses that mean specifically in a little short clip that uh per predictive pre predictive prescriptive predictive adjective cool so that's 104